Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and for being here this weekend. We're so delighted to have so many families and alumni here with us. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, so thank you for coming to all these fantastic sessions. For anyone who is joining virtually, I'll be monitoring the Q&A, so in case if you have any technical difficulties, feel free to reach out and I can assist. Um, but otherwise, I'm excited to have Alyssa Hammond with us. She is the Director of Undergraduate Career Development and the Pulsifer Career Development Center. Thanks, Alyssa. You're welcome, Allison. Good morning, everybody. Or is it good afternoon? We're at noon, right? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful Falcon weekend. How excited are we? It's like 2019. I'm excited. I'm excited that you're here, that there are faces and that we're not, and I can actually see you, which is just marvelous. Um, it is always a pleasure to be here for Falcon Weekend. This is one of my favorite things to do during the entire academic year is to talk to parents and alumni. So before I get started, I just wanna get a sense as to who's here. So who are my first year parents? Woo, all right, welcome. How about sophomore parents? Excellent. Junior parents, senior parents. Oh, lonely to senior parents. Thank you. <laughs> and just alums who just want to know more. All right. Excellent. Thank you. One lonely alum in the front. Thank you very much. Excellent. All right. So are you all ready to have a little fun? Yeah, fun. Okay. Yeah, clap it. Yeah, clap it. All right. So what we're going to do, yeah, it sounds very heady, CEO 101, but in reality, what we're going to do during the next 45 minutes is I am going to give you a little taste of what your students are going to go through or have gone through while they're here. Um, so if you're first your student parent, um, your kids are going to take CDI 101, hopefully in the spring. It's our first year career design introduction course. Um, we have a seat for every single student for this course. We are running 35 sections of it in the spring. So make sure your student registers for that in November. They're gonna learn everything that they need to know to find an internship and a job in six weeks. And before I move on from that, I wanna know something. How many of my parents in the room are still in the same job that they had when they graduated from college? And it, oh, one person, all right, a few people. All right, excellent. So the majority, you've moved on, right? So the skills that they learn um, in CDI 101 are life skills. These are skills that they're gonna use over and over and over again, because you're gonna have more than one internship and more than one job. In fact, students and adults are changing their jobs upwards of 12 times on average and nine career changes. So doing something completely different. Like me, I'm a recovering lawyer. My name's Alyssa and I'm a recovering lawyer. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so I know what it's like to change careers after realizing, oh my God, I hate what I'm doing. Um, and a lot of us go through that multiple times in our lives. So that's what they learn in CDI 101. In CDI 201, that is for our sophomores and some juniors who are not quite sure what they want to major in or what they want to do with their lives. And so we have a major and career decision course, um, which runs in the fall. And during that four week uh, experience, our students are doing um, strengths, Clifton strengths, which they also do in their class in CDI 101. Um, we take a deep dive into what they're really good at. And then we do a strong interest inventory, which uh, matches their interests with potential career paths that might be very satisfying to them. And then we do some design theory, theory some design your life work, um, where we help them create odyssey plans and figure out exactly what things they might wanna do as it relates to their strengths their interests, their values, how they want to contribute to society, um, and how it all pulls together in terms of what they want to major in. And then once they figured that out, then they can take CDI 301, which is our asynchronous courses. These are advanced career design courses by major. So our dedicated career coaches are teaching these asynchronous classes. They're like career development uh, resources on demand. They're fabulous. Um, and our junior, sophomores, juniors, and seniors can take it at any time. Um, and they have access to all these resources for the entire time that they're here at Bentley, um, which is really great because depending on their major, recruiting is different. Career, uh, career development is different. How they're getting their jobs is different. And so we have a career uh, CDI 301 for every single type of, of major here at Bentley. 
And we're very fortunate that all of our courses won the National Association of Colleges and Employers Career Excellence Award a couple of years ago. Um, so I think we know what we're doing. So that's cool. Um, so what we're going to do today is I am bringing to you an 80s edition of one of the classes that we teach in CDI 101. And we are going to be talking about networking. How many of you love to network? Yeah, exactly. So that's why we are going to talk about networking and how we're going to take the work out of it. Um, but we're going to do it a little bit with an 80s flair because that's when I went to college. So um, I'm an, I am a child of the 80s. If you come into my office, I have John Hughes posters all over it. Um, and I'm constantly playing 80s music from Sirius Satellite. Anyway, all right. So what's love of networking got to do with it? Well, let me tell you something. It has a lot to do with it, okay? So these are, uh, these are placement outcome statistics and data um, from the class of 2021. We're right now in the process of gathering our data for 2022. I won't have that for you all until about February or April um, because we're collecting it through December. So I have December, I have 2021 data for you. So I wanna ask you a question. For the, for the data panel on the left, you'll see that personal networking, 30% of our, of our graduates in 2021 got their jobs through networking. Any guesses as to what major that is? Communication. What major do you think that is? Finance. finance, yeah, finance. Wow, you guys are good. Yes, absolutely. So our finance majors, look at that. 30% got their, their job from an internship and 30% got, got it through networking, okay? So it's really important. You have to be doing all of those things, um, but networking is really important. Now, how about this one? 23%, the top percentage for this, this major. What do you think? Who do you think this is? Have I stumped you? Business. Well, yes. Marketing. Market? Are you cheating? Yes, you're, you're on my website. Are you looking at it? Yes, marketing. So this is for marketing, okay? So it doesn't really matter what your major is. Networking is a really critical piece of this experience and trying to get your full-time job. So, you know, the truth is, is that 80% of jobs don't get posted. They're filled via word of mouth. So expanding the people in your network can drastically increase the number of your opportunities that come across your radar, right? So yeah, there are lots of jobs that are posted, but more often than not, the there are even more jobs that aren't posted. And the only way that you know about them is through people that you know, right? So this applies to all jobs at all levels, okay? Any age, any stage. So whether you're a first year student trying to find an internship, whether you're someone like me who's um, and looking for another job, 50 something, um, you are, you, you know, it, it, networking is everything. It's everything, especially when you're older, right? Because you, you know, you might've been out of the game looking for a job for many years. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in a position where you need to look. And what, what do you think about? Oh, who do I know, right? What's my network look like? And if you haven't really been working on it, that could be a problem. So it's important for everybody to know that networking is important to you no matter what age or stage you're at in your career. Okay, so here we go. So hopefully many of you are familiar with this very, very popular movie scene. Adams, here. Adam Lee. Here. Adamowski. Adamson. Here. Adler. Here. Anderson. Anderson. Here. Bueller. 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 Um, he's sick. My best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid is going with the girl who saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night. I guess it's pretty serious. Thank you, Simone. No problem whatsoever. Fry. So, <laughs> so thanks to Simone, she has basically told you what contact theory is. So does anybody know what contact theory is? All right, contact theory is a theory that a psychologist by the name of Stanley Milgram realized through his research in 1967 that all the, everybody in the world is connected to everyone else through six other people. 
Okay, so through his research, he connected someone from the Antarctic, is that down there, up there, I can never remember, I'm not good at geography, um, with, uh, with a pygmy in, Am in the Amazon, literally, through six people, okay? So by very, the very virtue of the fact that we're all sitting in this room together, we are now connected. So now I am connected to your cousins, mothers, dentists, um, massage therapist, if that person exists, okay? And because of social media, it's now actually 4.92 degrees. And I don't know how a person can be a 0.92, but apparently that is a thing. But what Simone was talking about, about how they found out what was happening to Ferris through all these other people is a demonstration of contact theory, right? You heard from somebody and they heard from somebody and so on and so on. So when we talk about networking, this is critical to how to develop a great network is it's through contact theory, right? And knowing people and then knowing those people, et cetera. So thank you, Simone, for that demonstration. Now, in the 90s, a very popular game arose from contact theory. It's called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. And the game is, is that you can name an actor or actress and connect them to Kevin Bacon within six people, six actors and actresses. I want to tell you right now, I'm an expert in this game. All right, I am ready to be challenged to demonstrate this. So you got an actor or an actress, you want me to connect to Kevin Bacon? Ben Stein. Ben Stein, oh my God, great. Yeah, Ben Stein. Okay, Ferris Bueller's day off. Uh, he was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off with Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick was in um, The Producers with Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane was in The Birdcage with Diane Weist, and Diane Weist was in Footloose with wow. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Give me another one. This is the best part about this program. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington was in Philadelphia with Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks was in Apollo 13 with Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Woo! This is how I know I'm not losing my marbles. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. But I can get there. <laughs> you know how? Because Cary Grant technically was in Sleepless in Seattle with Tom Hanks. <laughs> Anyway, I do this with my students all the time. And it's so funny because that's the one thing they remember out of the whole class is, oh my gosh, I remember when you did Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. And I'm like, thank you. But it's hilarious when they give me a young person and I'm like, who is that? I don't even know who that is. So thank you for being kind to me and giving people that I actually recognize. Um, anyway, so, so Kevin Bacon, Six Degrees of Separation, et cetera, it all really comes together with your degrees of connection. So when you're networking, it's really not about the people that you know, but it's about the people that they know, okay? So when we talk to our students about networking, we say everybody's connected. So inevitably we start this class and we say, hey, do you, you know, do you, you have a network? And, and, my, and my students are like, no, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. And it's like, yes, you do. You have, I say, do you have family? Yeah, who has family? Me. Who has friends? Me. Um, who has teachers? Me. Who has people, you know, maybe coaches or old, you know, employers or, oh, me, 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 me. I'm like, there's your network. It's, you already have people. So, so it's important for you all to know you already have a network based on the people that you already know. And reminding yourself that everybody is connected. It's just a matter of getting to where you want to go through those connections. So everybody's connected. Um, but like I said, it's really about getting to those second and third degree connections. So let's do a little, a little role play here, okay? So you're so lucky because you sat in the front row. Um, what's your name? Julie. Um, Julie, what do you do? Do you, you're a mom, awesome. Okay, but you know, you have friends, right? You have friends? Good, I'm so happy for you that you have friends. That's fantastic. I'm, I was hoping the answer would be yes. Okay, so I am interested in going into marketing. 
we're going to pretend. Um, and I'm friends with you. Okay. And we're talking, we're having coffee and I'm like, you know, I really am interested in going into marketing and you say, Oh, I know this gal. What's your name? Marie. Marie. You're like, I know Marie through like uh, soccer. Um, and Marie works in marketing. And I'm like, whoa. So you say, so I say, is it okay if I reach out to Marie? And you say, yes. So I reach out to Marie and I say, hey, Marie, my name's Alyssa. And I'm sorry, your name, I have short, uh, Julie. Julie suggested that I reach out to you because I'm really interested in marketing and I'd love to just pick your brain about it, trying to get into it. And you're like, well, any friend of Julie's is a friend of mine. So I'm happy to talk. And then we have a nice conversation and I say to you, what do you think? You know, do you know somebody else? And you say, as a matter of fact, I do. What's your name? Christine. Christine. So you say, as a matter of fact, I know Christine because Christine works at Reebok in marketing. And I'm like, woo, that's my dream. So I go to Christine and I say, hey, Christine, Marie suggested I reach out to you. Well, Christine, are you going to say no because you're friends with Marie? Of course not, exactly. And so now I'm to Marie, okay, through three people. I just, Christine, sorry, Chris. See, I can remember who's connected to Kevin Bacon, <laughs> but yet I can't remember anybody's name. Thank you, menopause. Okay, did I say that out loud? Okay, anyway, so three degrees, okay? With one conversation, I got to the person that I'm really, really interested in talking to will hopefully be the person that will help me get my job. Okay, so that's what we're talking about is talk, who, think about who you know and talking to them and tell them what you want to do. And that's so funny about students is that they're so afraid to tell the people that are around them what they want to do, even their roommates. Like I've had a student come up to me and say, you're not going to believe this, but I lived with someone for three years. And on my third year, when I was living with them, I finally told them what I wanted to do. And I found out that that's what their dad does. And I was like, ah, what? You're killing me, Smalls. What? So we need to talk to the people who are around us and ask them, tell them what you want to do in the hopes that at least they'll get you close. It doesn't need to be exact. Okay. So it can be, well, you're doing marketing and finance. I'm not interested in finance, or maybe you're in finance. I'll talk to you anyway, because maybe, you know, somebody in finance in, I mean, marketing in your company who I can talk to. Right. So it doesn't have to be totally like absolutely on point with what you're looking for. Everybody knows everybody else, right? People know people. So we want to kind of channel that six degrees of Kevin Bacon. And the most important people in your job search are those second and third degree contacts. Okay. As I said, we got to Christine through three people. Okay. She's where I wanted to get. She's who I wanted to get to. That's who you want to get to. Okay. So we're basically using our friends and family to get to second and third degree contacts. And again, students, you know people. So don't say that you don't, you do. And if you say, I talk to everybody, that's a lie because there's billions of people in the world. It's impossible. Okay. So Start with your first degree and get to get to your Kevin Bacon. So Christine was my Kevin Bacon and I got to her, okay? And you all can too, but you have to talk about it, okay? You gotta talk to people and let them know what you're up to and let them know what your goals are. And anyone that they know might be the lead to the right person, okay? So that's number one. Number two is let's talk about the actual discussion, okay? So, you know, Christine, sorry, Julie and I are friends. So we already know each other, but maybe I'm reaching out to someone who I don't already know. Here I go to my new, my one and only alum. Hi, what's your name? Bob. Hi, Bob. So Bob, let's just say for the story, you're single and I'm single. Okay. And we meet each other. Like I reach out to you and I say, Hey, Bob, right. <laughs> Thank you for having an easy name. So I reach out to Bob and I say, Hey, Bob, I'd love to get together with you. And you say, great. And so we sit down and we start talking. And all of a sudden I say, um, you know what, Bob, to be really honest with you, I would, would you marry me? Um, I want to know, Bob, your, your truthful reaction and what you would do. And you're not going to hurt my feelings in the slightest. Maybe. Maybe. Ooh, <laughs> that's actually a first. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I'm going to call my husband right now and tell him, like, I got my first maybe. This is awesome. Well, usually when I'm doing this with my students, 
they'll say very nicely, well, Professor Hammond, I would uh, get up and I would excuse myself to go to the restroom and I wouldn't come back. <laughs> and, and that's okay too. Or I would say, oh, geez, like what have I got myself into, right? So, you know, when the first date, I love you, you're the one I'm looking for, right? It's like scary, whoa, what's happening? That is like asking for a job on the first meeting with someone you don't know. Okay, so when you are asking to meet a complete stranger, like a LinkedIn contact or somebody like that, and you say to them, I'm looking for a job, can you help me? And they don't know you, you don't have a relationship with them, the answer is probably gonna be no, right? Because they, they don't know you yet. And, and then where do you go, right? Where do you go after like, yeah, sorry. Like, oh, okay, can we still talk? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, it, it gets awkward, but let's talk about it this way. If I say to Bob, we have a really, so say that never happened, wipe it from your mind, although I appreciate the maybe. Um, so we get together and we talk and we have a nice time and we're like, hey, let's get together again. Great. We get together again. Maybe we have another discussion or we do something else and we meet again. And over time, we start to develop a relationship. So at some point, you know, maybe we decide we take things to the next level, who knows, but there's more of a, of a possibility of that happening when you give yourself the opportunity and the time to develop that relationship. Okay. So when I talk to my students, I'm like, listen, networking is like dating. Okay. Except guess what? Good news. I don't want you to be, be monogamous. There's no monogamy in networking. Okay. I want you to date a lot of people. Okay, a lot. So it's like networking. So treat business networking like dating, okay? Focus on compatibility and approach it with pragmatism and not high expectations. So if I'm meeting with you multiple times, at some point, we'll get to a place where I might say to you, you know what, Bob, I am looking for a job. Do you know anybody who might be looking or do you think you might ha have a need in your company? And Bob is gonna be much more willing to help me. OK, and even if he doesn't have an opportunity, maybe he'll refer me to somebody who does. OK, so that is the second part of this process is making sure that we're taking the time to develop these relationships with people. So informational interviews, which is the date. You need to do those informational interviews and then follow up regularly. Now, I'm not suggesting you stalk people. I am suggesting, however, that you reach out to them maybe every six weeks. I'd say a seasonal reach out right? Every six weeks or so, a different season has changed, okay? And when you reach out, maybe ask them for something, like ask them a question, ask them to look at your resume, or maybe the things that you're learning in your informational meetings, you're doing, which is awesome. And you can reach back out and say, hey, Bob, you know what? I joined that association that you suggested, and I'm going to be at the next meeting. I hope to see you there, okay? That's it. And, and now Bob's like, wow, she's doing what I'm telling her to do, you know, like, oh, now I'm becoming a mentor to her. Okay. So when the things that you're learning, you want to act on and then tell them that you're acting on, tell them your time has not been wasted on me. I am really listening to what you have to say. And I want to use your advice to help myself. And in the process, you're developing a relationship with that person. And then by the time you're really ready to make the big ask, they're going to be ready to go to bat for you. And that's what we want. We want a million people ready to go to bat for you at any moment in time. So relationships, lots and lots of relationships and having a meaningful network, okay? If you meet with someone one time and you don't talk to them again, they are not part of your network. Sorry, and students think about that all the time. Like, oh, well, I talked to them. When? A year ago. Well, do you think that they're gonna talk to you again now? It's been a year. Like, it's like, again, like going out with one time and then a year later, like, wow, I, I have second thoughts. Let's try again, you know? And they're like, what? Like, where have you been? So it's important that you really do this on a regular basis. Um, and we'll talk about what that looks like in a minute. And that, again, leads to the job prospects, okay? Uncovering those unknown job opportunities that are not out there. All right, more videos, yay. All right, so any Stranger Things fans? I hope a little, okay. So this is from season two and it's very, I know it's gonna seem really random, but trust and believe it makes sense, okay? So this is Steve and Dustin and they're basically monster hunting. That's all you need to know.
Fabergé. What? It's Fabergé Organics. Use the shampoo and the conditioner, and when your hair is damp, it's not wet, okay, when it's damp. Damp. Do four puffs of the Farrah Fawcett spray. Farrah Fawcett spray? Yeah, Farrah Fawcett. You tell anyone I just told you that, and your ass is grass, you're dead, Henderson. You understand? Yep. Okay. He said Fabergé, my heart nearly sank. I was like, yeah! He's talking about Fabergé. By the way, this is set in the 80s, if you don't know. So that's why they're talking about it. OK, so back in the 80s, there was this really popular shampoo called Fabergé Organic Shampoo. And there was this really famous commercial that they made with Heather Locklear, who was like the bomb in the 80s. Anyway, this is the commercial. When I first tried Fabergé Organic Shampoo with pure wheat germ oil and honey, it was so good I told two friends about it, and they told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, does anybody remember that commercial besides me? I can't remember your ladies' names, but I remember that commercial. Okay, so that commercial, it really demonstrates how we're going to do this networking, believe it or not, okay? So... Students are overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed, you're working, you're, you're taking care of your families, you're doing a lot of stuff. And the thought about networking is like, oh no, right? And same with your students, they're studying, they're in activities, maybe they're working. And so this seems very overwhelming, all of this networking situation. How am I supposed to get all this done? So what I tell students is to take it, to chunk it really, to give yourself manageable goals every week and stick to it, okay? Make it part of your routine. So I say this, what I want you to do is I want you to create a list of people to talk to that you already know, your existing network. And I want you to talk to or reach out to five people on that list, just five, every week. And the goal is to schedule one informational meeting a week, just one, okay? So the calls or the emails will take what, 20 minutes? because you can use the same email over and over and over again. And the actual meeting will be maybe a half an hour on the phone, on Zoom, whatever. I mean, thank you know what? That's the only silver lining or one of them on, uh, about COVID is that now we're all on Zoom. So you can Zoom with anybody across the world, which is fantastic for networking. So if you do that, if you talk to five people, reach out to five people, send five emails, and you schedule one informational meeting, that's awesome. When you do that informational meeting and you ask the most important question in that meeting is at the end, which is what I asked Julie, which was, do you know anybody else who I could talk to? You only need one person, Marie, okay? And then you've doubled your network. Heather Locklear, Fabergé, okay? So think about it from a perspective of a 14 week semester. You talk to one person every week for 14 weeks, that's 14 people. That's pretty freaking awesome, okay? You talk to those 14 people and you ask for one referral, just one, you've doubled your network, 28 people. You talk to those 14 people and they give you another 14 people. I don't do math, but it's a lot. And it's, and it's exponentially growing. It's Fabergé organic shampoo. Okay, and they told two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on. And then your screen is full. And by the way, once you start working off referrals, you're not even on your list anymore, right? You can leave your poor friends and family alone because now you're working off of referrals who are getting you closer to your Christine's, okay? Or your Kevin Bacon's. Kevin Bacon, that's what we want. We wanna to get to Kevin Bacon through all of these people. So that's how you do it without making yourself nuts, okay? Without overwhelming yourself and without making yourself like, I can't do it, it's too much, it's too much, okay? I'm talking about an hour of time a week, maybe, at most, okay? And guess what? 36 people that could potentially get you a job, amazing. Double that, amazing, amazing. So don't be a stranger, get it? Stranger things, ask for referrals. All right, so here is how you can help your students. 
Match, make a match, make a make me a match. All right, so here's what you're gonna do right now. You all have devices, right? I want you to take out your phones and I want you to go to the notes app. See, I told you we were gonna be in class. I don't joke. You guys are actually gonna do a little work right now. Everybody take out your phones, open up your notes. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to write down five people that you know that you think your student could have a conversation with. And again, they don't need to be doing exactly what your student wants to do. They don't even need to be in the same industry, just people for them to talk to, to get information. Think about it. Who are five easy people that you could say to your child, hey, you know what? You should talk to so-and-so. You should talk to Uncle Sam. You should talk to um, our neighbor. You could talk to um, you know, your former teacher who I'm still in touch with. Who are five people that your students could talk to and you're the referral? And who won't turn them down because they're saying, my mom or my dad asked, suggested that I reach out to you. <laughs> What's that? It's like, I hate your mom anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, all right, should I preface it that they like your parents? If they make sure that the people that you're referring to like your parents. Okay, thank you for that too. That's a first as well. All right, a first maybe and a first make sure they like your parents. I love it. All right, so, so I would ordinarily give you like three minutes to do it. So while you're thinking about that and writing those names down, I want to talk to you about some ways that we're helping your students network and create their Kevin Bacon situations. Typically in the fall, we have a career fair. And this year we had 126 companies come and over 1400 students attended. And we had over 400 alumni come to this event at the arena. Um, it was awesome. Again, it was 2019. It was, felt so good to have everybody together again. In addition to that, already in the last, just the last two months, since the beginning of September, we've had four specialized career fairs by major, and we've had over 120 companies at those events. That's just September and October alone. Um, and in October and September alone, we've had over 50 employer coffee chats, information tables, and special events. And there are hundreds of virtual and off-campus events that are happening all the time throughout the academic year that your students can get access to via Handshake, which is our, our online recruiting platform. So if you're interested in knowing what we're up to and seeing all these events, and even though we're at the end of October, and it's like halfway through the semester, if you go on Career Edge, you'll see all, like there's still at least 30 more events happening before the end of the semester. And you can see all that data that I showed you. You can see all the awesome things that are happening for your students on careeredge.bentley.edu. How am I doing for time? Um, also on Career Edge, we have checklists for our parents. So our parents are always like, what can I do to help? Or what should I know? Or what should my students be doing based on what class year they're at? So we've designed family checklists, fit parent student checklists for every class year. And on it, it's specific to those students that class year and what they should be doing. So you know, okay, this is what my students should be doing. And this is what I can be doing to support them. But the bottom line is this, your students need to be accountable for their own lives and their own jobs. Remember, they are the CEOs of their lives. Okay, so you telling them what to do may or may not work, but encouraging them, guiding them, making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing is extremely important. You know, parents are partners in this process, just like we are. You know, we're the coaches. We can coach, advise, mentor, support, motivate. But at the end of the day, who plays the game? They do. You don't, they do. Okay, so they're the ones that play the game. You can't write their, you might be able to write their resumes and their cover letters, but you certainly can't interview for them and you certainly can't do their jobs. And neither can I, but we can certainly be there to help coach and support them along the way because they can and they should because it's, it's their lives and they should own it and, be, and have that responsibility. So that's it for me. I want to thank you all. We have 10 minutes, so which is awesome. So if we have questions, I'm happy 
to to take them. Yes. As you think the leading companies and career fairs, mm -hmm. um, should, um, should that be the, the person they meet there? Should that be their point of contact, or should they circle back with the school because there might be some institutional knowledge that they've been coming in for years? But yeah. The best, if they really like a certain thing. Yep. So they go back to the school and say, "I like X Y Z company," or follow that person in that way. Both. Okay, so here's here's what because you've got to hit it from a lot of different angles, right? There's no one way. We've got to take. Remember, in the beginning, all the different ways to get an internship, or all the different ways to get a job, is very true in this scenario. Is that you have to work every channel. So yes, they should follow up with the recruiter and say, "It was a pleasure meeting you at Career Fair. I'd love to continue our conversation. Can we set up a time to talk?" They should also come to our office. If they are a first year or a sophomore, they can come to our office every day without an appointment. They can just drop in, okay? One to three o'clock, sophomore and first year parents, every day they can come in without an appointment and get help, okay? We have a dedicated career coach. She's phenomenal. Her name is Christine Vidic, and she's there with our highly trained student peer coaches, our career colleagues who are upperclassmen who have all gone through this, so they are really amazing and very insightful and they can help your student to identify okay so is this is this a corporate partner of ours or if they're if they're not what are other ways that you can engage with them like networking right going on to linkedin let's make sure your linkedin profile is up to date because hopefully you've taken cdi 101 and you've created one um let's how do we use linkedin to identify alums potentially at that company and even if they're not alums strangers right again strangers are important too you want to reach out to people that you don't know in fact a study was just done that 40 percent of the conversion rate from internship to full-time offers come from cold networking, meaning they're not even going through people that they know, they're just reaching out to people that they identify on LinkedIn or other ways and just saying, I don't know you, but I'd really like to talk to you. The conversion rate is the highest when it happens that way, okay? So, so to answer your question, both, for sure. No. Uh, is it blatantly obvious to them that they're corporate partners? Yes. So, so some companies we know a lot about, we have a lot of engagement with, and then some are some we don't. I mean, there are ten thousand employers on Handshake at minimum. So obviously, we're not going to have relationships with all of them, but obviously, we do have relationships with many. So, and if we don't, we try to figure out what's the best way to make inroads. Yeah. Great question. Other questions? Yes. Oh my God, yes. Okay, you're the best. <laughs> if we could do this for the rest of the time, you're my hero. Um, okay, Tom Holland was Spider-Man, right? Yeah. yeah, Tom Holland was Spider-Man with Zendaya, right? Homecoming one? Okay, I'm trying to think about what my son saw. Okay, so Zendaya. Zendaya was in The Greatest Showman with... Hugh Jackman. Oh, don't, don't I don't want to cheat. I don't want to cheat, but I thank you. I thank you so much. Um, I could do Zac Efron. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Zac Efron. Zac Efron was in Hairspray with Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken was in The Deer Hunter with Robert De Niro, and Robert De Niro was in Sleepers with Kevin Bacon. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. All right, other questions? Yes. With the changing in the economy, you know, mm. some people believe we're pending, you know, or already in a uh, recession. How do you like calm a student or yeah. just an employer mm -hmm. who may be changing their budgeting for the next summer internship or you know, I mean yeah. we're changing um, absolutely how do you how do you, do you do the same thing or how do you so it's all the strategies don't change no matter what the economy is. In fact, the networking becomes even more critical because there are less opportunities. I will tell you at this particular moment in time today, the jobs are plentiful right now. In fact, Massachusetts is struggling to hire 
okay? Struggling. So there's a lot of opportunities in this area right now. Now, will that be the case a year from now, two, three years from now? Obviously hard to say. Um, but what I can tell you is that when I started at Bentley 14 years ago, it was at the last Great Recession, okay? And that was good times um, <laughs> to be in my job helping students. But believe it or not, our students did remarkably well because of the fact that they knew what to do and they worked the strategies and they knew I can't just rely on a job posting. I have to create my own opportunities. So, so we'll kind of, time will tell, but right now, but, but the strategies are evergreen are evergreen, they're timeless, okay? The resources might change, they might adjust, they always do, um, but that's the, the, the education. We've been doing these classes, CDI 101, for 10 years, okay? The education really has not changed that much. So, um, but you know, it's really a matter of students really taking advantage of the time while they're in school, doing internships, um, getting in, involved in activities, um, ascending to leadership roles, those are all really important things. Doing well in school, obviously, duh. Um, so, you know, so we just try, you know, they don't seem to be overly concerned and neither are we because there's a lot of jobs right now. So it's kind of hard to say, oh, there's a recession coming when they're like, but there's 10,000 jobs on Handshake alone, you know? I mean, we just, um, Deloitte has an externship in the summer for sophomores, and not in the summer, in the spring, for sophomores and juniors. And we had to like extend the deadlines because students weren't applying because they're applying to so many places right now. There's just so many opportunities, again, which is great. Um, but talk to me next year. If you decide to come back and listen to me talk again, we'll talk then. Hopefully things haven't changed that much. Five more minutes. All right, I think I have questions. Yeah. I just, I just had a very quick question. Sure. Uh, could you talk a little bit about using LinkedIn mm -hmm. and developing content and a persona on LinkedIn and how that ties into a student's profile and sort of marketability. Could you talk? Because it seems yes. it seems to be a big thing because I'm sure some of the social media platforms, but maybe for employers standing on LinkedIn perhaps. Yes. LinkedIn is the number one place for employers to go to recruit. Number one. So when we educate our students on creating their profiles, here are the three or four most important things. Number one is their profile picture, okay? Their profile picture needs to be professional looking. It doesn't need to be like a composite picture, but it needs to be professional. So, you know, either professional dress or business professional, but like no glamour shots, you know, no, uh, no, uh, like, oh, this is a really great picture of me, but like I had to cut my arm off because it was over someone's shoulder, like that kind of thing. Um, also, please no prom pictures. I know you all look gorgeous and very handsome in your tuxes and in your formal wear, not appropriate on LinkedIn as well. And definitely no like sleeveless numbers. No, no, because it's a headshot. So, um, so we want the picture to be appropriate. That's number one. Number two is their byline. Okay, so when, when you do a LinkedIn search, you know, a bunch of people come up and you see their picture, you see their name, and then you see a line, a byline. That is very important. If it says student at Bentley, wah, wah, why is that not good? Why is saying student at Bentley not good to have? Yes. Yes, please tell me you took CDI 101. Yes, he did. Because he said exactly what we would have said. Absolutely, that's exactly right. A plus plus, even though you only get a pass grade on that class, but A plus plus for you. Yes, exactly. So you need to say something about your value, right? What's your value proposition? So if you're a first year student, candidate for a, you know, a, a bachelor in economics, Okay, or just economics major at Bentley is, is great. Um, if you have an internship, you could use your internship title, right? But student at Bentley means virtually nothing because there's 5,000 of them. So it doesn't distinguish them at all. So that's really important. And then the third most important thing is the summary. You know, 
the summary is everything. Because if the picture and the byline compel you to click, because that's all you got, right? The picture and the byline is what gets you to make that next click. Then it's the summary. That's the next thing that they see. That should be your elevator pitch. What would you say to somebody if you were meeting them for the first time? But the beauty is, is that you can say a lot more than what 30 seconds would allow you. Okay. Now, my friend, do you remember about that? Do you want to say, you want to, you want to do my job for me for a second? Because I see some head nodding and I could use a drink of water. So essentially, you want to put a short introduction of the name, what your major is, what you're hoping, what you're looking for, and sort of like the last question, last question, yeah, any time, may, any time you work for Yes, absolutely. Bravo. Again, A++. Um, you want to have who you are, what your goals are, a taste of your resume. Okay. What are your skills? What are your strengths? We also do something in CDI 101 with Clifton Strengths Finder, where your students get a top five report of what makes them awesome. And that's not an understatement. Okay. It is literally a fingerprint about who they are and what is so great, what they do well, like not well, what do they do to the point of excellence without thought? They get that gift of self-awareness on the very first class. And then we dig into those reports and create statements. So that way they know how to talk about themselves with the language about who they are. So if they're strategic, they say, I am a person who finds paths. I am a person, if I'm analytical, I am a person who can see how to do things in a number of different ways before landing on the right solution. You know, they, they, they know who they are and they can articulate that. And in their LinkedIn profile, in that summary is where they can articulate that as well. So who they are now, what they've done, a little taste of it, what their goals are moving forward. And then, their resume, the, the pieces of their resume should be in that LinkedIn profile. But don't put the link, don't put the resume on LinkedIn. Don't do that because that's people will steal your identity. Um, but grab the content out of that resume exactly as it is and put it into that LinkedIn profile. You'll be rock star. You'll you'll be hitting hitting searches left and right. I have quest one more question. One more. I thought I had a hand raised, so. All right, you want to do what should we? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's such a great question. All right, here we go. I got one minute to answer that question. All right, so when I was in like young, my parents, my father owned a small business. And in the 80s, like he was like, don't ever do that. Be a professional. And in my like 80s mind, that was either be a doctor or a lawyer. And blood was like not my jam. So I was like, I'm gonna be a lawyer. And I also really loved LA Law at the time. So um, so I was like committed to being a lawyer, and my parents were thrilled. So they encouraged. I went to Syracuse University. I did everything I was supposed to do to get to law school. Um, I did internships, classes, the whole nine, got into New England Law in Boston. Went to my career services office, said, this is what I want to do. They were like, okay, I did all the right internships to all the right classes. Um, had a job when I got out of law school in 1994, which was when the really, really first Great Recession happened. Um, took and passed the bar, which was worse than childbirth, and I've had three kids. And then uh, 18 months later, couldn't get out of my apartment because I was sick to my stomach with how unhappy I was being a lawyer. Um, I won all my cases. I hated doing it. Why? Because I was a divorce lawyer. Um, and I realized at that, at that time, I quit because I couldn't do it. It physically took a toll. And um, people would ask me, why'd you quit? And I said, because I couldn't be a nice person. And I realized when I took Clifton Strengths that my second highest strength is positivity. And that is why. It was my downfall. All my other strengths, I would totally have crushed it as a, as a lawyer, but my positivity and wanting to make people feel good and happy was just under, it was getting crushed under the wheel. And so I had a midlife crisis at 26 years old um, and found my way into higher education. And that is why I love what I do because I get to use my strengths all the time and I stop people from going to law school. <laughs> Thank you all so very much for spending some time with me today. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Yay, Falcons!
thank you everyone um at the end of the weekend we will send out an email so if you have other questions or want to be able to connect with Alyssa or others in career services we can help to do that for you our email is alumni at bentley.edu next is lunch if you're interested and that's where you're looking for the falcon feast is happening down next to the dana center so your best bet is either you can hop on a shuttle and go down or you can sort of uh, walk down by the student center and cross over the bridge and you'll be down in the athletic complex. There will be plenty of people to help direct you and guide you. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. Stop sharing.